Welcome to this PS Touch tutorial video. This time we're going to look at the analytical mode of PS Touch. Um, this mode is already known to our users of PS Trace. Um, it was developed for um, the quantitative analysis and um, in app form it should be really helpful for point of care analysis. We offer two approaches for the um, analytical mode. Um, you can use a calibration curve or you can use the standard addition method. In this video we will cover uh, how to change the modes, then how to save and load an analysis, um, to change the, assign, uh, to, um, the assignment of the curves, also how to set the analysis uh, parameters, and where to find the results of your analysis. Um, again, I'm using for this tutorial the uh, Galaxy Tab 4 with a 7-inch display. Okay, after opening PS Touch or even after you've done your measurements, you can switch into the analytical mode. You can do that by touch on the logo on the top left and you will get the selector mode menu. Or you can, uh, on the top right, choose from the menu the select app mode. Then you can well select a mode um, and you see when you change the mode that the uh, that the color of the bar at the top is changing. Also, the analytical mode has a third tap at the bot, bot, bot at the top called analysis. Um, so, um, doing the actual measurements in this video would uh, make the video quite long, so I will load an already made set of uh, analysis curves. So, you see when you go to the menu that we have two new menu options, which are load analysis and save analysis. So, in the analytical mode, you can save a complete set of curves for one analysis together with the parameters um, and analytes information you put in. So um, we can load a complete analysis, which I will do now. I'm losing, use, um, loading an example for the standard edition. Uh, and you see we have here now three curves with uh, three different peaks. Uh, the auto detection already found the peaks, so they're all labeled. Uh, and you see that the labels actually indicate which analytes are being, uh, are belong to that peak. Um, how we add these labels I will show later. First I would like you, uh, I would like to show you how to assign um, the curves to um, certain, uh, to the options. So first you have to open the a curve legend and you have to uh, activate the curve uh, that you want to change the assignment and then you press assign and then you see all your options. So yeah you have the options to um, assign a sample, a standard 1, standard 2, standard 3, standard 4. Um, what these actually mean depend on the uh, approach you choose. In a calibration curve, usually standard 1, 2, 3, 4 are solutions with known concentrations that um, will make your calibration curve usually a linear fit. And then the sample will be measured with an unknown concentration uh, with the correlation between the signal and the concentration from the calibration curve. You can then determine the unknown concentration. In the standard addition method, which is a method that you use when you're afraid that the, your matrix might influence your sensitivity, you use your um, sample and you measure that first. Then you add a fixed volume of your standard solution. You make another measurement, that will be standard one. Then you add another uh, fixed volume of your, um, of your standard solution. Repeat the measurement, that's standard two. And then you can extrapolate everything. Okay, so when we uh, change the uh, curve assignation uh, assignment, we're actually asked to confirm. Uh, so I now change this curve to standard three. 
And if I want to change it back to standard 2, I have to press twice, and that's it. Okay, so after we've assigned all the curves, we uh, need to set also in the method parameter the uh, information about our standard solutions. So if we go to the method editor, you see that the method editor actually looks as you know it. Uh, all the blue parts are already known from the normal mode. Uh, the red part is specific for the analytical mode. When you open it, you get the analysis settings. So on the top, you see the determin determination part. There you can choose if you want to do a standard addition or a calibration curve. Um, as mentioned before, um, usually a standard addition is done when you think uh, components might interfere with your um, sensitivity. And a calibration is often done when you have a lot of samples that you want to measure after you have determined your um, calibration curve. Okay, the next option, uh, the next section is the analyte section where you can choose if you want to have the option to um, enter into the table below the added volumes or the concentration in the cell. Well, when you enter directly the concentration in the cell, it's a bit of less values to add. Um, but you see with added volumes, you need to enter all the information and the software will calculate the concentrations for you. The usual pairing of these uh, two different options is that the standard edition usually go with the added volumes in microliter uh, and the calibration curve usually goes with the concentration in the cell because in the calibration curve you have a set of standard solutions that you can uh, always measure and just fill into your system which will most likely be just the electrode and in the standard edition you're well you're adding your standard illusion uh, standard solution to your um, to a sample solution. Um, we're going to look in this tutorial at the added volume uh, table. In the table you see that every analyte has its own column. You can scroll through the columns for up to four analytes by using the arrows on the top left and top right. Then you see we have the ID row. In the ID, in the ID row you enter the name that you want to be uh, associated with your analyte. This can be something like DDT if you're looking for um, organic toxins. Um, we, uh, this sample is river water and we're looking for heavy metals. So we just took the, um, the symbols from the uh, periodic table uh, for the different heavy metals. Below that row, so below the ID row, oh, also um, the ID and, and so what you enter in the ID row will be used for the labels of the peaks. Um, the next row is the solution number. The solution number determines if you're using different solutions or the same solutions. So at the moment, we have for copper 1, lead 2 and cadmium 3, meaning we have three different standard solutions. Um, if you would um, if you would have a combined lead and cadmium solution, you would enter the same number, so in this case 2 and 2, into the fields. Then um, the software would know that every standard addition of volume for one of them is also an addition for the other one. Um, the next row the next row is about concentration. There you enter the concentration of your standard solution. And at the end of the row, you find a drop down menu where you can choose uh, which concentration you want to use. So uh, examples are milligram per liter, um, ppm, for example, um, or, um, or for example, nanomolar. So, you can choose what you want uh, uh, for concentration of a standard solution. This will also be the units for uh, the results. So the results will be also given in the units that you've chosen there. Um, so the lower part of this table indicates um, the volume in microliter that was added 
So uh, after each measurement. Below the table for the added volumes, we find the um, general volumes section. There you can enter the sample volume, which is the well, the volume of sample that you've added to your cell. And then the cell volume, this is the final volume of the cell, so after maybe diluting your sample. If you haven't diluted your sample, then um, both values will be the same. But in this case, for example, our um, sample volume was 10, and then it was filled up to 10 milliliters uh, in total. That means there's a dilution factor of 10. Below that, we find the peaks settings. Uh, this is actually how you correlate your uh, signal with um, with your uh, concentration, or what part of your signal correlates with your concentration. You can choose the different options. Usually, you choose the height, and you see the names. Uh, in the name row, you see again the ones that appear in the ID row. And uh, below that, you find the e-peak, where you enter the value where we expect the peak for that uh, analyte. Um, be, um, then the software will search for the copper peak at around minus 0.3 milliliters, um, plus minus the search window, which is 0.15 volts. So... Um, Yes, yeah, so it will look around that value for the peak. It's an automatic peak search. Um, you can also, if your peak is difficult to determine, um, you can choose not to make an auto search, but to set fix, fixed borders for your peak. So you would then, um, you would then um, switch the checkbox off in the auto um, row. And then you would enter into E left and E right um, the values for um, the borders for the peak. Okay, so once you've entered all these parameters, uh, we can go to the analysis tab. And there you will see all your results. On the top, you see a summary of all results with the uh, most important values. So um, the most important values are the concentration in the sample, the concentration in the cell, um, the correlation factor and the slope. So with the correlation with the concentration in the cell you see here again our dilution factor of 10 is here. So the concentration in the cell is 10 times lower than the one in the sample that has been calculated. Um, the correlation uh, coefficient r square indicates how well the points that we measured are arranged on a line. A perfect line would uh, deliver an R-square of 1, and the lower the value is, the further away it is from the perfect line. Below that you find the slope. The slope uh, also represents the sensitivity of your method and sensor. Um, changes of the slope can be used as a quality control, so if the slope is um, significantly changing, especially if the sensitivity is dropping, uh, you should change your sensor maybe. Below that you see all the results for the single analytes. Um, you see for each of the points the um, calculated concentration, the peak potential, um, the height of the peak, and the um, added volume and the dilution factor that's calculated from the volumes that have been added so far. Um, then you see below, you see below um, the curve. Um, this curve shows the points and the linear fit. Uh, so you can see that if a point doesn't fit, you can switch it off by just checking the use um, or de-checking the use checkbox or checking it again to add the point. Uh, this is handy if you have an outlier from the line use. So here you see uh, the linear fit uh, and uh, where it ends at the x-axis is our unknown concentration in the standard addition method. Um, yeah.
So this already closes our uh, tutorial video. So thanks for watching and please also look uh, at our other videos.